Josh Jacobs was a huge hit for the Raiders with the 24th overall pick. In 13 games for them this season, he amassed 1,150 yards rushing with a 4.8 yards per carry average, which ranked him 5th in the league. While not much of a passing threat out of the backfield, he proved to be an exceptional runner in John Gruden's run-heavy offense. When faced with short yarded situations, he got a first down 75% of the time, and while 86% of his attempts came when the Raiders were under center, the Raiders used a ton of outside zone and stretch concepts to get Jacobs pushing the edge before making a decisive cut to gain yards. Normally when you see the kind of personnel that the Raiders trot onto the field, like two tight end sets or three running backs, you think power downhill football. Almost the opposite is the case though, and it fits Jacobs' skill set perfectly. He was a patient yet decisive runner as the outside zone concepts developed in front of him. Jacobs also showed great short area quickness and was able to make people miss in the backfield. While there's a ton of stuff to love about Jacobs in his first year, he did have a tendency to dance in the open field, and at times he would wait so long for things to develop that he would get caught from the backside and get tackled for a loss. Let's start off with the Raiders' use of outside zone. Jacobs is a one-cut guy which fits perfectly with a zone blocking scheme. He has a great understanding of how to set up blocks and is patient enough to let the play develop before sticking his foot in the ground and getting upfield. The general concept of outside zone is that the entire offensive line will move one direction and generally leave the backside defender unblocked. Usually teams will use a numbering system to help translate man blocking into zone concepts. The first defender play side is labeled as the zero. In this case, it's the nose tackle lined up over the center. The next defender to the play side is labeled as the one and so on. So the center is responsible for zero, the guard's responsible for number one, the tackle for number two, and the tight end for three. Backside, the same concept applies, except they generally want to step to the zero to create double teams, and if they're uncovered, they can climb to the second level. There's no designated hole for Jacobs. The running back has an aiming point to get to the outside of the offensive tackle. If the defense seals off to the outside, he shifts his vision one hole in until he finds a lane and can take it. The Raiders are running this out of 21 personnel here, which is two running backs and one tight end. With the fullback number 45 leading the way to help the tight end on the right side if he needs help. The Raiders rarely ask their tight ends to win one on one with a defensive end and almost always find ways to work a double team with them, whether it's with another tight end, a fullback, or an offensive tackle. If this play was blocked as designed, you could see the hole opening up on the outside. As it is though, number 61, the center, gets beat pretty bad by the nose tackle and Jacobs does an awesome job shuffle cutting away and around it while maintaining his initial track. He understands that in zone concepts there's going to be backside pursuit and the end has been left unblocked, so he has to maintain his track to the right or he's going to get tackled. It might only be a 3 or 4 yard gain, but there's no wasted movement in his cut and he immediately hits the hole when it appears. Here's another example of the stretch outside zone where the center again begins to lose ground. Jacobs once again cuts behind him and gets vertical for yardage very quickly and efficiently. Jacobs does an exceptional job of setting up cutbacks as we'll see in a moment. By pressing all the way to the rear end of the center, he's forcing the linebackers to pursue as if he's going to go outside. When this happens, it allows his linemen to set up blocks and angles for him to exploit. To help Jacobs with his ability to cut back, the Raiders run a ton of crunch action from their fullbacks and H-backs who are lined up in the backfield. This is called split zone. Here you can see the exact same blocking scheme for the Raiders except for the H, number 83 Darren Waller is coming across the formation on a crunch block to kick out the defensive end. Waller does a really good job of picking up the first enemy color because the left tackle gets beat inside by number 94 Dean Lowry. Ideally he's able to get onto that block and the H can come all the way across to the unblocked man number 55 Zadaria Smith. As it is though, Waller is able to seal the cutback lane for Jacobs regardless and the rest is all Josh Jacobs. Jacobs pushes the outside hard to set up his blockers to be able to climb and get up to the linebackers before cutting back underneath the H crunch and getting into the open field. Jacobs' one cut change of direction is special. Even when he's into the second level, he can stick his foot in the ground and get away from flowing defenders to give himself more room. He won't necessarily break your ankles, but he will definitely use your momentum against you and give himself space to work. Here's another great example of the use of the crunch block for the cutback. It's again an outside zone blocking scheme with Darren Waller number 83 in a tight split coming across the formation to crunch and kick out Khalil Mack number 52. Take a look here at both the linebackers and how they react to Jacobs pressing his play side run to the left. They both hop and get out of position which allows the lineman to get up to the second level and seal them off from making a play on Jacobs. Jacobs reads that the play side is covered and cuts back underneath the flowing linebackers for a good game. The Raiders will also use a quick hitting pin and pull quick pitch scheme to get Jacobs on the edge and allow him to read and set up blocks. 
They usually do this off of some type of jet or shift motion to pull eyes from the defense before snapping it and pitching it to Jacobs on the outside. The only thing that really changes in the blocking scheme is that the receiver to the play side will pin the defensive end and allow the play side tackle to loop around and get downfield. It gets Jacobs outside and lets him work in space. Here's another variation of that quick pitch with the design to get outside. The Bears do a good job of sealing it off, but most of the defense is over pursued and Jacobs is able to cut underneath and find a lane for the touchdown. While Jacobs displays great patience setting up and waiting for holes to develop, this can sometimes cause him to get tackled by the backside pursuit for negative yards or no gain. Here Jacobs has a clear lane off the center but stutter steps and tries to string it out before getting tackled by the unblocked end from the backside. Jacobs again here slow plays while trying to set up blocks but gets tackled by aggressive backside pursuit from the linebacker position. If there's one way to stop Jacobs, this is it. If you can hold the point of attack, unblocked ends and linebackers can shoot in from the backside and tackle him behind the line of scrimmage. Overall, Jacobs seems set up to succeed. While the Raiders don't have a super diverse run game, it is exceptionally effective and efficient and plays off of Jacobs' one-cut style of running. While primarily a first and second down back, I expect him to start getting more third down reps as he becomes more acquainted with NFL blitz pickups. He was fine at catching the ball and decent in pass protection, but Gruden routinely picked Richard over him in third down situations. While there may be injury concerns, Jacobs mostly does a good job of rolling off of contact and avoiding big hits, which should reduce injuries in the future. There's a lot to love about Jacobs' running style, and he's clearly the back of the future for the Raiders. I'd expect 250 plus carries and 1200 yards from him to be the status quo in years to come, as the Raiders look to compete with the Chiefs in the AFC West. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. It helps us out tremendously. Comment below who you'd like me to analyze next, and make sure to check out our website, weeklyspiral.com, where you can read all our latest content, including a written form of this video with GIFs. You can also find our Patreon and social handles and all that stuff there as well. Until next time, I'm Casey Sully, and I'll see you on the next Film Breakdown.